Hi, welcome to our focus week for the month. Uh, this month we are going to be focusing on heart disease. Makes perfect sense. And um, we're going to start off our week on diagnosing heart disease in dogs and cats. So I'll go through it separately for each one, um, just so that we don't mix things around too much. Um, so let's start with our kitty cats. Uh, heart disease is a silent killer in cats, unfortunately. It causes 62% of sudden death cases in cats. And I actually had the second cat I ever owned when he was 12 years old. He had a sudden death and it was from cardiomyopathy or heart disease. And I had no idea that he had heart disease because with cats, it's very common that they will have heart disease without a murmur, and also no evidence of heart enlargement on radiographs. So cats are so good at hiding their disease, even from the doctors who are trying to figure out if they have a problem. And so they make it very difficult for us. So there's three main types of cardiomyopathy or heart disease that we see in kitty cats. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is the the problem 85 to 90 percent of the time um a lot of times we don't have um a, a big explanation for why they do it other than genetic influence and this one is characterized by thickening of the ventricles which are the lower chambers of the heart there's also a restrictive cardiomyopathy, which is 10% of less of primary heart uh, muscle disease. And that's an excessive buildup of scar tissue on the inner lining of the heart. And because it's on the inside, again, we're not going to see um, enlargement on radiographs with these guys. So and then the third kind is dilated cardiomyopathy, and it's pretty rare in cats, actually. Probably only accounts for 1% or 2% of primary heart disease in kitty cats. And with that, we get enlarged ventricles, which is the lower part of the heart, but the walls are very, very thin and stretched out, and so they can't contract well to push the blood forward um, into the upper chambers of the heart. So, uh, you know, big difference where we get a... Um, a thickening of the wall or a thinning of the wall. So secondary causes, so that's primary heart disease. Those are the three main kinds that we see, but other things that could contribute to ca cardiac disease in kitty cats include hyperthyroidism. So it's usually a tumor of the thyroid gland. It, rev it produces more thyroid hormone. We get a revving up of the metabolism. And so the heart's beating faster. A lot of these cats will come in the clinic with a heart rate of 300 to 350. They have what we call a gallop rhythm because the heart is just racing so fast. Um, so treating hyperthyroidism is critically important for maintaining heart health. Hypertension or high blood pressure is pretty common in kitty cats, and it's a major contributor to heart disease and kidney disease. And unfortunately, it's it can be very difficult to get a good measure of blood pressure on cats in the office because they're already stressed out from being in a box and going in the car and be, being in a strange place and being handled by strange people. Um, so this is one time when maybe a house call veterinarian would be a really good option for trying to get a better measure of blood pressure on your cats. Anemia or lack of red blood cells will cause heart murmurs, uh, cause the heart to have to work harder. Uh, so we see that pretty commonly in kittens um, who have a severe flea infestation. Uh, so definitely stay on top of that. Um, toxins, cancers, viral infections like FIV or FELUC have been associated with um, myocarditis or inflammation of the heart. So there's a lot of different things that can occur. Um, the, there are genetic predisposition in certain cats. So Maine Coon cats, Persians, and Ragdolls are kind of at the top of the hit list for genetic heart disease for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So genetic testing would be a really good idea um, if you are uh, wanting to have one of those breeds. Look for a breeder who does that genetic testing and has um, multiple generations of lineage to know what has occurred as the cats age. Males are more likely than females to have heart disease and older cats are more likely to have heart disease than younger cats. So symptoms with our cats, heart murmurs can be heard on an exam, but they're not that common. 
um, abnormally high heart rate, skip beats or an abnormal rhythm. Uh, notice when listening to the heart panting or open mouth breathing, that is a not a normal thing for cats. Rarely do cats pant. So if you have a cat who has exercise intolerance, they run around and play and they're, you're playing laser tag or chasing a toy and they have to stop and catch their breath. And particularly if they're open mouth breathing, I would get them looked at for potential heart disease exaggerated respiratory effort or increased respiratory rate, cold legs and feet due to poor circulation, pale mucous membranes due to poor circulation, um, lethargy. And then with cats, uh, if they have heart disease that's been undetected, a lot of times we will get a an embolus or a blood clot and it leaves the heart and it gets lodged where the femoral arteries come off in the back end. So it's very painful. The cat will be screaming down in the back end. It could be one leg, but it's usually both legs uh, become paralyzed. And it's just because there's no circulation. There's no blood flow going to the legs. They'll be very cold. Um, that is an emergency that needs to be treated immediately. Um, loss of appetite and gagging uh, if they're getting any fluid buildup in the chest for sure. And then collapse, which is what happened with my cat. So if you have any suspicion or your veterinarian has any suspicion that your cat might have heart disease, um, first thing is going to be um, a full exam, blood work to check for kidney disease, hyperthyroidism, and anemia. Definitely get the blood pressure checked uh, to look for hypertension. X-rays are not a bad idea just to rule out any sort of lung disease that might be causing the symptoms that you're seeing. And then um, an EKG to see if there are any abnormalities in the rhythm or the rate. And then ultimately an echocardiogram, which is an ultrasound of the heart, is going to be needed to diagnose the condition. So if, particularly if you have one of those large breeds who are prone to heart disease, you absolutely want to um, have a cardiologist <laughs> literally as part of your veterinary team. Um, we saw a lot of these in practice. And so um, having a cardiologist that you can, I, I would even start maybe doing screening tests middle age with those cats, uh, particularly if you see any signs or if there's anything in their lineage or you've had DNA testing that shows that they are prone to disease. All right, so let's talk about dogs. In dogs, we have two main kinds of, um, we do see genetic problems in both dogs and cats, uh, but the things that we see most commonly in dogs, mitral valve disease, that's the disease of the small dogs, less than 20 pounds, Cavaliers are at the top of that hit list, but uh, Maltese, English Toy Spaniels, Dachshunds, Pekingese, Chihuahuas, Yorkies, Bichons, they're all prone to mitral valve disease. Um, and so this is an inflammatory condition with degeneration of the heart valves. And it's also called myxomatous valve disease because the, the valves uh, get all kind of lumpy bumpy and they don't close effectively. So when the heart pumps and they open, when they're supposed to close, they can't get a tight junction. Um, geez, sounds like when we're talking about leaky, leaky gut, we've got leaky, leaky valves. So then we get a murmur because there's turbulence in the blood flow, the blood backflowing from the upper part of the heart back into the lower part when it's supposed to all be flowing forward. And the murmur will be graded on loudness and if you can actually feel the murmur on the chest. So if you can feel the murmur on the chest wall, it's called a thrill. And um, that is a grade four or higher when you can actually feel the murmur. So if you put your hands on each side of your dog's chest, the uh, it'll be closest on the to the body wall on the left side. So it's probably where you're going to feel it. But you can do this with cats or dogs. Put your hands on either side. And a lot of times you'll feel the heart beat. Just like on your chest, you can feel the heart beat a lot of times. And if you feel the heart beat and it feels crisp, it's fine. If you feel it and it, it feels vibrational, that's a thrill. Okay. Um, the weird thing with murmurs is that the loudness of the murmur does not correlate to the severity of disease. So we have a lot of animals with a grade six murmur, which is the highest level because it's very loud. It sounds like a washing machine, but they don't have heart enlargement and don't need medication. Uh, we have others with a grade three who have heart enlargement and need medication. So um, 
So the murmur, just because it's getting louder, doesn't necessarily mean that the heart disease is getting worse. Uh, things to watch for are the, similar with the cats, rapid, shallow breathing at rest. Your The normal resting respiratory rate should be 35 or less in a healthy dog. It's probably going to be between 12 and 20, depending on the size of the dog. Uh, they may have a depressed attitude, maybe restless, particularly if they're getting fluid buildup in their chest because they just can't get comfortable to, to, to breathe the way they want to. A lot of times they will sleep in a sphinx position. We call that sternal. So they're laying on their sternum because that gives them the most expansion of their lungs. We can get fainting. We can get that <laughs> coughing, clearing the throat, gagging sound. So we'll, we can see these symptoms in any heart disease in dogs. So we were talking about mitral valve disease, the other disease that, which we see about 75% of the time. And then the other disease that is seen is dilated cardiomyopathy. And that's mostly a large breed disease, Danes, Dobermans, Boxers, Greyhounds, Irish Wolfhounds, St. Bernard's, Afghans. Um, uh, the Boxers may have a carnitine responsive cardiomyopathy. So that's an, an amino acid. It's very easy to add to their diet. And Cocker Spaniels are the outlier who get dilated cardiomyopathy, even though they are a smaller breed. And the Cockers and Golden Retrievers may have a taurine responsive dilated cardiomyopathy. So um, this is where we need that meat in the diet for these dogs, because that's where carnitine and taurine come from. Okay, so the dilated cardiomyopathy in the dogs is very similar to the cats. We get a very thin uh, muscle, heart muscle wall. So it has a hard time pumping. So risk factors for worsening heart disease, certainly breed predisposition, age, high blood pressure, dental disease is a biggie. Um, bacterial, rickettsial or viral infection. So my mom's dog had a myocarditis from Lyme disease. When she was treated for the Lyme disease, the heart went back to functioning functioning normally with a normal EKG. Uh, heartworms are certainly a problem as well. So with the dogs, it's the same thing. We want blood work, we want x-rays, and we are much more likely to um, see heart enlargement on the x-rays with dogs, uh, unlike the kitty cats. So uh, we want to get an EKG to see if there's an abnormal rate or rhythm and all that lab work that we talked about, CBC, chem, urinalysis. And certainly if you're seeing anything, if, if there's a murmur detected, if you've got, and particularly on the x-ray, if you've got uh, heart enlargement or if you have an abnormal EKG, then off to the cardiologist you go and we get the um, ultrasound, which is the echocardiogram, and then certainly would want to be working with a cardiologist from that point. So uh, there are also a couple of specialized blood tests for heart disease. One is called the NT Pro BNP, and that test evaluates the pressure of the heart based on the stretching of the heart muscle. It is a special blood draw using special tubes. So if you want a Pro BNP test, you need to let your veterinarian know that ahead of time so that they have what's available to test for that. And then there's another one called a CTNL, and that tests for elevated serum concentration of cardiac troponin, um, which is a highly sensitive and specific marker of heart damage. So particularly if you have a breed who is prone to heart disease, a boxer, a cavalier, a Dane, getting these more specialized tests added on to your annual lab work and so that you can get a baseline when they're a young adult. And then if you follow it each year, you can see whether that is worsening and you can be more proactive with your diet and your supplements and uh, your monitoring. Hope that helps. Uh, for those of you with breeds that are prone to heart disease, definitely be proactive with this um, so that uh, you can try to keep them healthy for as long as possible.